Greetings. In this video, we're going to see how to export a PCB trace from, PC from DIY Layout Creator and then use image to PCB to convert that into Gerber's for manufacturing by PCB way or another manufacturer. So let's open this project up. And I am going to need to tweak this some as I'm uh, doing the export. So let's make a copy of this. And I'm going to save it as mainboard. It's normally called mainboard, so it'll, this will be mainboard export. OK, the first thing we're going to do is get rid of everything that's not my PCB. So I'm going to delete all that junk. And then we're going to take this. We're going to select the entire PCB. Uh, make sure we're in uh, grid mode, which is good. And we're going to move this to the upper corner of the workspace. And I'm going to edit my project settings. It is 8 by 6 inches, because freedom units are great, aren't they? And now we have this. Uh, Set if I hide uh, the layers, you can see there's the the board now matches the size of the drawing. So when I export it uh, to an image, I will get that size and not have to cut it down in GIMP. I'm going to hide all the components by disabling layer four, and now we have some different colors in here. So I'm just going to change all the traces to black. So we're going to go over here, search for traces. Select all, and then edit, edit selection. You can also do a control E, and we are going to change the color to black. OK, our traces are all now black. Uh, it looks like we have a solder pad that is the wrong color. So let's change all the pads to black as well. Okay, I don't see the board layer, so I think we need to enable layer two, and there it is behind. Now that's not a really good contrasty color, which is going to help us with the image to PCB, so I'm going to double click on that, or you can do the control E or the menu, and we're going to change the color. Let's give it a nice green, so red, green, blue. Holes in the board, uh, in anywhere that needs to be drilled, is white. But anything that is not drilled is green. And the traces where we want the copper to be laid down is black. They are actually, we want to disable layer 6 because we don't want the text for the PCB. So we're going to turn that off. And that looks wonderful, doesn't it? Uh, we do have over here a little bit of PCB text. Uh, it's inverted because this is going to be on the back side of the board, and so it will be inverted. Since it's on the back, when we're putting the components on the front, that will give us a second inversion, and uh, therefore we will be working on it in this format, which is what we want. Uh, and you will note the holes inside of the lettering do not get the white because those are not supposed to be drilled. So they retain the green, and they will not be drilled. So we have our board. Uh, and we're going to export it. We do not use the trace mask ex export because that would lose the green. So we're just going to export to a PNG and we're going to do main or export mask. Okay, and I'm just gonna close that for a minute. And And we're going to open image to PCB. And we're going to open an image. And I'm going to open that one there. And there we are. Now, you'll notice it's distorted. So uh, first thing we're going to do is mark the keep aspect ratio. And we're going to set size from DPI. DIY Layout Creator exports everything at 300 DPI, so we apply that. And you'll notice up in the upper left-hand corner now, we have the 
uh, V-board size in millimeters, uh, 203.2 by 152.06 millimeters. That is eight by six inches, which is the size of my board. So that's good. Now we need to change a couple of colors. The drill color is not going to be going to be red. We are going to be using white. So 255, 255, 255. Now we can update our previews. And now we can see we've got the, uh, the drill pattern from the board uh, in the preview window. So let's start doing our exports. We're going to export Gerber 1. Uh, that's going to be our trace mask. Different uh, PCB manufacturers like different uh, naming conventions. Let me look up the correct one for PCB way, as Big Clive says. One moment, please. Okay, and we want the copper layer to be named board dash B underscore CU. So bottom copper layer uh, dot GBR, and we're going to save that. Now we want to export the drill pattern. Okay, so uh, it has gone through and estimated the hole sizes. Uh, reviewing this, uh, it is not always spot on. So uh, I am going to change, these should be 0 0.8. Uh, one sounds good for those. Those are good at 1.2. This should be a 1.5. I know that because I don't have any 1.4 holes. Uh, see, 1.7s should actually be 1.8. And 2.7s. Yeah, they could work, but I will make them 2.8 just to give me a little extra margin. And then we are going to export this. You can check this box and you will get a solder mask with solder pad areas, the size you set around the holes. Um, since I'm doing a, a prototype board and I might need to make corrections, I'm not going to use that. The solder mask layer prevents you from soldering except on the pads, so it's difficult to work with. If you have a final product, it will help you solder the right places, and it will also help keep things from shorting out if something gets dropped on the board. So there's a the toss up there. And you, if you are using this, you can set the area around it. I, I have not used that feature, but it is there if you want it. And so I'm going to export this, and I'm going to export my drill file. Uh, the third thing we need to export is to export the board outline. And we get a warning saying, uh, yeah, this only works for square PCBs and stuff. If you had multiple, um, multiple boards uh, that you were paneling, you'd need to make your own. You draw an outline. You can run it through another instance of image to PCB. It'll just tell them how to cut up your boards. So the outline for PCB way is board dash capital E edge underscore cuts. GBR. So I am going to use the KeyCAD Gerber viewer. There is our drill. Uh, there's our copper layer. Uh, we want photo and edge cuts. And so there is our board. And there's our outline, how it's going to be cut down. Here are the drill holes. Looks like they're all going to fit in our solder pads. Lovely. Okay, so that's uh, the three layers that are required to build the board. But I would also like to do a silk screen. So let's pull up DIY again here. And we are going to enable six and four. So there's our components. We do want layer three, and we're going to make this look a little bit neater. To do that, I am going to just get rid of the ground fields. So let's, those are GF, so I'm gonna pull this up, select all, and delete them. Then we're going to change the traces. And I'm gonna do, again, do edit, Edit selection and change the width of all these. Let's make them 0.25 millimeters. 
Okay, that's looking more like something that would be a silk screen. And we're going to change our pin headers. And let's make them fully tra uh, transparent. You would think that would make the pin headers completely invisible, but the border lines remain. Just the body is turned clear. So uh, we're going to do something similar with our resistors. So let's. Uh, let's see, sort by that index. No, we want to sort by name. So we're going to group all of our resistors together and put them up. And let's set our alpha to zero. And let's set the lead color to black. Label color is also black. And now we are starting to get some good looking resistors there. Looks like our outlines might be the wrong color. Correct that. There we go. That looks lovely. Uh, transistors, that would be Qs. make those transparent as well. So we uh, border, we want black. How about relays? Set the opacity. Border is going to be black. And there. Let's make the indent black as well. That's the little notch on the end here to indicate orientation. Diodes. So diodes need to be done differently. We need to set we need to leave the alpha at 100 uh, because we want to see the marker indicating polarity. So we're going to set that to zero and the color to white. The label color, that's our text, is going to be black. And let's see, make sure these look right. And there we are. We can't see the trace going behind these guys but we do get the polarity marker. Uh, if you set the alpha to transparent, you don't get to see the polarity marker, which seems like the worst solution. Looks like the fuses over here are... You know, the one other thing on rechange, I have a couple of wires on here, and those are going to be an LN. I'd like those to be distinct so that I remember to add them when I'm building the board, so let's make them a little bit thicker than the traces. I made the traces 0.25 millimeters, so let's make these half a millimeter. Yeah, that's pixels we want, millimeters. There we go. Now those look nice and distinct. Uh, looks like we have some color problems with the lines, some of them being the wrong color, so let's make sure they're all black. There we go. So let's uh, export this. Once again, we're going to use export to PNG. We'll name this one main board export silk uh, PNG. Okay, so the next step we're going to do is we're going to fire up GIMP and we're going to open up that. Silk, file, silk screen file, and we're going to crank the contrast so areas that came out gray are going to be black. We're going to tweak this so anything that is not almost perfectly white is going to get darkened. This will ensure we have a good contrast so we get a good image out of image to PCB. 
Otherwise, it will ignore the gray shading areas. And back in here, let's open the image. There's our silk screen. Okay, and we're going to do an export of the Gerber. Top silk. There it is. Good. Press down. And for comparison, if we don't use GIMP to enforce a nice strong contrast, we get dropouts. Uh, these would have been great a little bit and they get lost. So let's go back to our Gerber file viewer and open up our top silk. And now look at that nice. Let me turn the copper layer off so we can see the silk screen neatly. And look at that, that's beautiful. Everything's nice and solid. It's gonna help us build that board, know where all these components go. We can see all the drill holes are going to align nicely. And uh, this is ready to be uploaded to PCBWay and be turned into board. So that is the process of exporting DIY Layout Creator through Image to PCB to make a board. And this is what the boards come out like. You have a beautiful looking silk screen on one side and the copper layer. They've actually run it through a wave solder to um, cover up the copper so we don't have corrosion issues. There we go. It looks beautiful. Um, this actually started as a much simpler board, something that was etch at home, um, and DIY was perfectly good for that. We could print out on press and peel blue and etch it in some uh, ferric chloride in the basement, and then borrow a drill press from the Neighborhood Association to drill the myriad of 400 holes. It was in subsequent revisions that it became insane to drill the number of holes this thing is up to, and having it manufactured was worth it. Uh, so yeah, at that point it was either redraw the entire thing in KiCad and deal with the steep learning curve that it comes with, or just use uh, image to PCB to use my existing uh, drawings to create the Gerber and just have what I already had manufactured. A lot easier than KiCad in the short term. In the long term, maybe KiCad's worth it. Um, almost surely it is if I was doing this every day for a one-time project. Uh, yeah, your mileage will worry.